the police officer arrested, so you bribing me in, in front of the court. Say, ah, you, you bribed me. So the, the Jew who was supposed to do maybe, I don't know, a few weeks in prison because he, he was uh, like he stole something, now he's condemned to 10 years in prison because he bribed an officer. And it's a really, really, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a higher crime. And the judge, the judges did, sometimes did the same thing. So the judges know that like they have the testimonies of every witnesses and they decide otherwise. They decide that, okay, yeah, I will believe the police officer even if no one's collaborate with him. Sometimes police officer, officer testim are the only one who said that, oh, he tried to bribe me. And the other police officer says no, because you, you ask for the money. And the judge is in front and say, oh yeah, okay, so we'll put the Jew in prison anyway. I, it, it seems harsh and uh, nothing is white or black, totally. And sometimes the judges and the police officer, not the police officer, but sometimes the judges acted differently. I know that uh, it happens a lot, just to like the portrait, to, to make a clear portrait. Sometimes the judges take the side of the police officer, but sometimes they will take the side of the Jews for in other circumstances. Uh, when a Jew is arrested for a small crime, uh, and he has a fee to pay. Sometimes people say like, okay, forget about the fee. Uh, you live in the ghetto, I think it's punishment enough. I know one judge, one judge in uh, Hot Fox did that a lot, so he helped several Jews by just letting him go. Yes? Were the Jews in prison before they as well after 1920? Yeah. But n no more, a lot of Jews died in prison. Yes. Now, what, what happened to Jews who went to jail, Polish jail? So, in court, it's a Polish system, an anti-Semitic system, and in prison, it's the same thing. So you have Polish guards uh, without any, even because it was the same prison for both uh, Poles and Jews from the German system or the Polish one. So like the biggest one in, uh, in Warsaw was Mokotov prison, and everybody went there. And the Jew, they were, they were not welcomed, less welcomed, I don't know, I know I cannot say that, but they were less welcomed than Poles, and they have to bribe a lot the guards if they want to eat. And I found something really interesting, and it's a part, it's a part of my postdoctoral research right now, uh, because in a few, in several cases, when a Jew died in prison, but when, when a, a prisoner died anyway, the prison sent a letter to the court so they can close the file. When it's a, when Jews die, they already they all they all uh, they always die by for by hunger. How do you say that? Starvation. 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 Thank you. It never happened to Poles, and I, I I searched in several documents. Poles who died in prison, they died because they fight, because someone killed them, because they had a disease, you know, something like that. Jews always starvation all the time. So and I so now I'm starting my research for my dissertation. I did not have the time to look at that, so I just I had an hypothesis about that. But when you look at the document, you understand that there was all a system in the in the prison where the Jew had to bribe the guards so they can have the ration of food. Poles didn't have to do that. Uh, Jew were always in the uh, the ground level in the prison without any bed. They were prodded, so the, 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 the food came, but in less quantity. But it's so, so it, it looks like that. But I'm not, I'm, I'm investigating right now that question. Well, the, the question is, did Jews have any right to rations at all? Because I think they were, the Germans If they had money, they had the right to, to, to have some food. To buy. But, they, but right, again. But, but prisoners are normally fed. And yeah. the Jewish prisoners were not. Yeah, exactly. But, you, and it's a difficult question because there's one survivor who, and I don't remember, Simlich? I don't remember his name, I'm sorry. Uh, he, he survived uh, the Holocaust and he was in prison in 1941, just before the, the, the start of the, the liquidation, at the end of 41. And he said that, what he noticed is that some, there, there were like two kinds of Jews in prison. Like the small criminal who just didn't know, like they were not real criminals, and they got like they they they, they fired or and they were <coughs> in prison and they died or they were really bad treated, and there was some a few of them who were really bright 
and they were that kind of criminal that they understood that in prison you can have food. There's like you can if you have the money, if you have the if you're you know how to talk to the guards. And these Jews, this to, to, there's not a lot of them. Apparently, they were arrested by purpose, on purpose, to go to prison to be to have food. So it's like it's it's really weird when you hear that testimonies with a conflict in my head with what I read on on, on the document. So I be, I'm investigating right now. I don't have that. But it's a good question. I don't have any uh, answer for now. I'm sorry. Any question? I will really okay. I will. I will finish with that because you don't have to I rush because you're doing the questions as you're speaking. So I mean, you have until eight thirty, whichever way you know. I will try to go. Further. I have a question for you, Dominic. Yes. How did you choose the courts that you reviewed? Because you said there were almost a hundred courts yeah. total. How did you pick your three? I pick one district. So it was a war so on, and it's just because I... And you pick the three levels in the war? And I, and I have three level in, in, in every district there's only one court of appeal. So it was Warsaw, obviously. And there's only two district court, Warsaw and Siedese. And I, I found it interesting to, to not take two times Warsaw, so I picked Siedese. And Otwaski just because I, I love the city. So, <laughs> so it's, it's only because, uh, because of that, yes. Uh, I'm just curious, because you mentioned the role of the blue police. Yes. Which was collaborating with Germans. I'm curious if you came across uh, any executions performed by, by the Polish underground army on the police yeah. officers who yeah. were uh, who posed the arrested Jews. Uh, yeah, I, I did not work on the. It's called the August Trials. That what you refer uh, to? I don't know. What it's okay, no, it's a, it's called the August Trials. It's the the underground, the Polish underground. I think it's starting in 1941, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but I know that they started uh, an underground system of justice using a little bit of the Polish, uh, of the criminal code of Pol uh, the Polish criminal code, and a little bit of something that they created to uh, to punish the one who collaborated with the Nazi. Not only the blue, but the blue police were mostly the, the, like they were the most in this court, and yes, they were uh, they were killed. Uh, but it was the collaboration at large. It's like, Everybody who collaborated. I know that there's some, uh, yeah, some some member of the court who fall, uh, Polish court, but not a Polish court, but the Poles who work in German court. Uh, a lot of civilian too. Yes. The reason I'm asking is because uh, when we're talking about the general go governor, yeah, yeah. Uh, it wasn't a union organized by the international law in contradiction to the, the Polish underground army and the government, which was. Yeah. So for me, I think the clear distinction should be made between those two bodies. Because the first one was clearly a party who was collaborating with Germans and very opportunistic like the police. Yeah. And then you had the underground institutions, schools, universities, and, and police, which uh, of course had a, you know, some bad examples of like, you know, killing Jews as well, but mostly they were involved in, in prosecuting those who were killing the Jews. So you know, I think we have you know, two parallel systems within the German system, which was overlooking everything. So yeah, but I'm not working on the underground, because the, that's true that the underground was a, a, a huge part of the of the occupied Poland. Uh, and this is it this, starting in 1939, since the, the, the Polish government went in, uh, into exile, they started to, that, that, that's why I said that the Second Republic never died, because they, they always had communication with the people in Poland. And the Polish underground, like the, the real, the, the, the underground army, if you want, the AK, was really huge, but never recognized by, by other countries. Okay, I'm sorry. But it's not, because it, I'm working on, it's really a part, it's like a third, yes, I understand what you mean, because you have the German regulation, you have the Polish regulation, that this is what the German wanted for the for for occupied Poland. They wanted the, these two system because uh, you should read David Ferber. He writes something about the the, the, the idea of a, a colony in Poland, yes. and it's really interesting when you see you see the occupied Poland in the spectrum of a colony. You understand why the German did that like that. 
why it's exactly the two systems like that. But yes, technically we should have the like the underground, even if it's not in occupied Poland, because it's supposed to be the remains of the Second Republic. But I have I have a few parts in my first chapter yeah. about that, but it's not my I don't have a chance to, to, to read it. But another reason why I'm saying that is because you said that it was an occupation without the presence of the occupier, yeah. which uh, I must strongly disagree because, oh, yeah? I know because the everyday terror is so present everywhere that yeah. it's, for me it's hard to imagine how well, I don't say that it was an occupation. But I'm talking only in, on the, on, at court, in the courtroom. I, I understand. Okay. I, I mean, I but you know, I said that and I contradict myself in my mm -hmm. last chapter too, and I had to say, Yes, like for the official it's like that, for the Jewish part it's not like that. Uh, when, I can talk about that right now, when my, my last chapter is not about the Polish-Jewish relation, it's about the Jewish life under the occupation through the lens of the court record. And you see that they try, the Jews try so much to have a normal life. They tried really, really hard and it's impossible. So I have this, like this, you know, I read, I remember when I read these documents, I was like, what, what are you thinking? Like, I have fights between two Jews. You know that going outside the ghetto was really dangerous for a Jew, because they can be armed by Poles, by German people, they, they were blackmailed, there was a lot of, uh, like, they were written everywhere. And sometimes, like, I have a case, I love this case, it's a fight between a dentist and, and a patient. And the dentist says, I, I can, it's for a prosthetic, something like that, and it's late. Like the prosthetic, because you don't, the dentist doesn't have any uh, material to create a prosthetic. And the patient is really, like he's angry, and he said, you're not, you're not a doctor, you're, you're a shit. That's it. <laughs> Does someone speak Polish here? No? Yes. So, pani nie jest lekarz, jest gówno. Okay, that's it. And the, the doctor said, oh, really? And she went to court to complain. With, with, and, and I was like, oh my God, and it's in 1941. <laughs> You're crossing the wall just for that. Because, and it's because they want to have a normal life. They want to, be, to have the right to, to, to have to, I, I think, and it, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I really think that they want to be a part of the Polish society. And they want to use the tool like of the Polish society because they are poor. But because, like he said, you're a shit. It's no big deal, you know. Even. So what was the outcome? <laughs> they, they were. It's, it's at the end of '41, so the case was canceled because they they were deported. So sorry. There are a lot of cases like end like that. But, but it's, it's interesting to see that in the, both of them, they fight over that. Like, yeah, but I had the right because I was supposed to have no my feet and now I have nothing and yet, but I'm not a shit. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, what's the, the, it's a, an offense against reputation. It's, and and you, you, you may think that under these circumstances, the German occupation, reputation is not that important, you know? But it is because they have nothing else. There's a case like that, there, another case, uh, it's a, a landowner and, and a tenant, and it's a, it's a fight because one that didn't pay. Uh, and the tenant was insulted, he said that the, 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 his, his, his owner was mean, and he went to court for that too, like, uh, it's offense, it's not against repetition, against something else, but like, he insulted me, basically. And they went to court and this this huge fight because the landowner lived in a war sign, the tenant is an out for us, and he cannot leave the ghetto and etc. So you, you see the, the normality of, of the conflict. It's not because yeah, yes, there's German everywhere, yes, you there's blackmail, you have hunger, people dying in the ghetto, but you go to court because you want to solve a problem. But sometimes it's between members of the same family. But yes, you're right. Under all of that, I can see that. This case didn't have any hand because they were deported. So even if they try to have a normal life, the occupation is still present. Sometimes uh, the landlord cannot go to court because he doesn't have the permission, so he cannot, quit, like, cannot leave the ghetto. So yes, again, you see that the German occupation is everywhere. But they try. Yes? Yeah, so you're saying like the, 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 the Jewish, the 
the, 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 the judges had authority, had, had would be for the, the crime the Germans didn't care about, had full discretionary, had, had, had the, 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 the judicial system was in place. In how much of the discretionary sort of break? So if for 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 a set crime, was there say you have to do give five years or five ten or is there saying you can't can give up to? I'm not sure I understand the question. So the like, like, so you think that in the system even it would be before the, the occupied why? before occupied or in, in, in during occupied. Yeah. If a could a judge manipulate yes. the system so they yes. they, they, they try yes, to Yes, he could, but he had this whole system, like the whole government over his head. Yeah. And but yes, he could, and yes, he did. Yeah, okay. uh, if you read, like, there's a lot of documents about the, the series of pogroms that happened in Poland before the war, and they went to court. And if you read the judgment of these, like, I don't know if you know the Pshitik the, the pogrom. It's a, it's a huge pogrom in, in Chitik, obviously. Uh, and the, 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 the verdict is so weird because there's, okay, like it's, a, it's a little bit dramatic. Uh, in the, at the, there's two accusations. One, uh, a Jewish man is accused to kill. He has a shotgun and he was like, it's, it's a big fight in the, in the village and he's in, the, in front of his window inside and he, he, like he shot like in the, in the crowd, and he killed one man. Okay. So he was accused of killing a man, and he went to prison, and he has a huge sentence, 10 years or whatever. Um, I don't remember, but something like it was not on purpose, but still went to prison. Excellent. The same time, yes. At the same time, during, in the same crowd, uh, a few Polish men, I don't know, four or five, enter the house of a Jewish family. They kill both the parents with an axe, and they try to kill the kids. But the neighbors enter and they're like, okay, can you stop? And they were released. They had something like a week in prison because, oh, but we don't know what the Jews did. And, you have to, it, and it's the same, it's the same uh, trial. Like it's for the same, it's, so yes, it was like this before the war, but sometimes, again, it's like a lot of judges did just their job and correctly. But before the war, you had this, that these huge institutions over over the justice system, the old government, and the Ministry of Justice, who look after every everything. Under the German occupation, you don't have that because the German didn't care, and officially, the Polish government was in exile, so there's no more head of state. You can say that in French, not sure in English. Head of state. Yes. Yes. I, I'm a little troubled because I, mean, I, I came here to, to learn more about Polish-Jewish relations, but you haven't given us any pattern. And I just like, pattern? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, and, and, okay, and, I, and, I have uh, one. And so, Maybe. and so, if you have, if you came across a pattern, yes. all kinds of pattern, okay. I'd like to hear what the pattern is. Okay. On a social, like it's really on a social level. But I don't know if it's a pattern, but you, you, you'll tell me. Uh, I have. Notice that, yes, there are some patterns in, uh, in the beginning of the war, you know, during the September campaign. Uh, I don't know if you know where I work, you know where Warsaw is? And till the east uh, border, this is the region I'm looking at. And the city of Sielce is really at the border. People, Jews from Sielce, in the campaign of 1939, when the German enter Warsaw, and after that they were coming, they quit their, the, 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 the city to go For the on, the, oh yeah, on the Russian so side they, because they, they thought that it was safe. So they entrusted their property to, the, to their neighbors, a lot of them. But during this time, so the, the, like in a few weeks, the border changed. So they were in occupied Poland, so they returned to Sierce in the region because it was home. Their houses were, uh, were there, their houses were there. And when they came back, the house is empty, or the house is with new people inside, Poles, who said, no, no, it's my house now. So they went to court, because they want, like, I entrust my property, and they never give it to him. Like, it, it was supposed to, 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 to come back. And in Poles, the reaction is not even violent. It's really, it's a, what, 
I call latent uh, antisemitism. It's just, yes, but, and the direction of Paul is, yes, but they are Jew. They are rich. Like, uh, yes, I stole their, their thing and I, and I sold them, but they're, it's, they're Jew. And it's the reason they gave in front of the judge, in the courtroom, yes, but they're Jew. And you have the same pattern, but with more violent. During the war, in the same region, sometimes, a lot of times, uh, Poles in the street will, you know, in the CLT region, the ghetto were open and Jews were allowed to cross from uh, village to village uh, later than in, in, in Warsaw or Orthodox until 1941. They can, they were free to go whatever, whatever uh, they want. And often, so they, they were attacked by Poles in the street beaten, humiliated, insulted, uh, they steal their, their, uh, their money, they ask them sometimes like for humiliated, then when they are <coughs> near a river, it's a, it's a real pattern, they ask them to get naked and they took the clothes. And in front of the court, they have the same reaction, <laughs> yeah, but they're, po they're Jews. Like, they have money, I ask for money, and they have no regrets. It's really, and, it, it, and it's the people talking. Uh, and again, I will repeat, it's not every poll, but these polls, yes, it's a dear Jew. It's a, and this is, yes, it's more, it's a violent thing, it's anti-Semitic, but like with violence, like they want, and sometimes they are drunk, and they, they say, oh yeah, but they were Jew, and I was drunk, so logically I have to beat them, you know? It's tragic, but I don't know if you, you were looking for a pattern like that, but yes, I have this, this and it, it's, Sadly, it happens a lot. It's not only one case. When you have just one case, you say, okay, like that thing happens sometimes, but it's a pattern. Like to stop Jews in the street, uh, empty their pocket, uh, humiliate them, beating them, uh, even with if it, their kids. Yes? And, and the court findings in these cases you just described? It depends on the judges. Okay. Sometimes the judge will condemn, yes, they will condemn. Normally, when it's violent, they will condemn the criminal. So they will do a few weeks in prison and have a, fee to, uh, a fees to pay. But uh, they, some, judge, some judges are really like they, they respect the letter of the law and they follow the criminal code and everything is perfect. But in this kind of case, it's, it's difficult for them to, to do otherwise, I think. It's so obvious, even the like the, the polls admit like that yes, that yes, I beat them. Yes, I stole them. Yes, but they were Jew, you know? They, they don't have any excuses. But sometimes, yeah, the judge will, you know that the sentence, it's like a week's in prison for that. And, you know, I read the criminal code and the code of procedure and I said, no, he's not, like, he's not supposed to do that. Like sometimes the polls will say, well, I was drunk. But it's not an excuse. In the criminal code, you have an article saying that you have to be conscious of your crime to be accused unless you were intoxicated and you decided to do so. But if you just put the other, the last sentence, the, and the, the judge will use this article saying, well, oh, but he didn't know what he's, he was drunk, so he didn't know what, he's, what he was doing. But you know that there is like a second part of the article that was just forgot. I think I will. But you, ha you brought some nice images there. Maybe you could go through them oh, so after yeah. that. Because, you know, you answered a lot of questions. So, yeah. I mean, it says you wish. But I want. Uh, but you can open, no? What is it? No, no. No, I'm listening. Um, so, in the court cases, I wonder. I guess it's, it's two questions. That's okay. uh, first of all, do any of your polls. Well, especially Poles, make any reference or allusion to the German Empire uh, to defend their actions? No. Or is it just but Polish anti Semitism? That uh, is not when it's a Polish civilian, but when it's, a, uh, when it's interesting, it's a few cases. I have uh, two or three only of them, so it's like not representative, but Polish officers, Polish police officers, sometimes, <laughs> so they. they, they they bring the case, and with Poles and Jews, so it's not a, but they bring the case in front of the court saying I was assaulted by someone in the street, so it's assault against an officer, it's a really, like it's a, it's a huge case, and they send a letter to the Gestapo saying that I was uh, assaulted by a civilian and I want the civilian to go to the German court, and the Germans said, but no, because you're, you're not German and 
there is no German regulation like in this case, but they, they will try to explain this demand by saying, yes, but I am a Polish officer, so I represent Nazi Germany. But for the German, it's not like it's not true. But some Polish officer, yes, they, it's a real collaboration. They really think or they want to be a German. So, but never a civilian. Oh, I have one case. No, it's Zach. I have a hundred cases. cases. Uh, one, this is, this is an interesting one. It's a really rare one. It's happened one time. It's a Pole who assaulted a Jew, and he, he hurt him really badly. So the, 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 first, uh, the first trial took place in, the, in, a, in a municipal court in Chiedese, and they had to send it in the district court because the case was too huge. So the district court condemned the Poles for a few months in prison. And the lawyer said, no, uh, it's not his fault, it was a Jew. So he went to appeal in Warsaw. And the Warsaw uh, court said the same thing. No, 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 you, you, like, you hurt him bad. You're the bad guy. You go to prison. And the guy appealed to the German court and win. And I was like, it's impossible. There's a letter uh, from the German court counseling the, the trial. So I did some research about this guy who assaulted the Jew. And I, like, he was working for the administration <coughs> of the city of Gavrolin. So working, like, and this is my hypothesis, working for the municipality, he used to work with Germans, so maybe he had a friend, a German friend who, like, made the deal for him. But it's happened, like, it happened one time in my district. Uh, question here, you said a couple of cases ended because the person was deported. Yeah. Do the court documents say, case closed? People deported. I have some. Sometimes the, sometimes the 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 knew that it was a deportation. Sometimes they just it's just a, it's a note like a written note by hand saying that uh, case cancelled. Uh, the Jew were deported in an unknown direction, or, or it, unknown. It does say yes, it says that. Uh, and then, but normally it's just that. Or I have some cases where the name of the accused, is that way it, it's an accused, a Jewish accused, the name is just cross and it says a dead. But we don't know why and we don't know how. And it's in 1942, so now, like today, we know that it's because she was deported. But sometimes it's just like, oh, dead. And sometimes the cases are closed only after the war, like in 1947, because like there's nothing else to do, there's no more people around, so they close the case. But yeah, sometimes you have some notes, but never like that you were deported to Treblinka camp or something like that, it's never that, it's always, we don't know where, it, where they are now. Yes? On the farm, how are they identified as Jewish? <sighs> yeah, but I, 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 I don't read Hebrew, so. But it was not for that, it was for something else, but if you read, but for your purposes, when you, if the, is no, the I don't, no, no, it's, 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 it's for, it's, what I wanted to, this, this form is, it's to explain some, something else. It's okay, to explain. So it's not the accused form. It's not an accused form. It's, uh, it's called the, the, the Shoah name database. And it's the Yad Vashem Institute who try to record every, like all informations uh, available uh, about Jews in Europe. Okay. But for your purposes, when you are doing your research in the court records, is there a category that says religion? Yes, but there, there, this is another problem because there's two kinds. You have Jewish religions or uh, Jewish citizenship. So you have Jew who are...